Hey, stand up, friends. Um, looks like this week we're going to be working on uh, fractions. Uh, we're going to be given a set of fractions, probably mostly four fractions, and what they're going to want us to do is to put them in order from least to greatest. Um, be sure and read the instructions real well because sometimes it may be greatest from least. Um, be sure and uh, give the answer uh, for what they're asking for. But let's just do one real quick. The thing that we have to do, we have to find the least common multiple between these fractions. And we have 5 eighths and we have one half. So we have three over four. We have two fifths, five eighths, and one half. Seems like it's been pretty popular um, the last few weeks when we're finding the greatest common factor or least common factor to use the latter method. And if you've seen my other videos from years past, I've always been a fan of the factor tree. But I'm slowly becoming a fan of this ladder method. And if you're not familiar with that, you're basically trying to find the smallest number that will go into any of these numbers. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be all of them uh, at this point, but at least some of them. And I have a 4, 5, 8, and a 2. So, and those were basically just the denominators from these fractions here. So, 2 is common with 4, 8, and 2. So, I'm going to use 2. And then just ask yourself, how many times will 2 go into each one of these numbers? And if it won't go into the number evenly, just bring that number down. Just bring it straight down. So, 2 will go into 4, 2 times. 2 will go into 8 four times, and two will go into two one time. And then I just ask myself again, is there any number, um, a smaller prime number that will go into any of these? And two and four have something in common. So two's common there. So I can use two again. Two will go into two one time. Two won't go into five evenly, so I just drop it. 2 will go into 4 2 times and 2 won't go into 1 so I just bring the 1 down so I have these 4 numbers on the bottom and the 2 numbers on the side basically all I have to do is just multiply these together um, here's 2 2 times 5 is 10 10 times 1 10 that's not doing anything so 10 times 2 we're going to go with 20. 20 times 2 is 40. So the least common multiple of those numbers is going to be 40. So here's the trick. Put 40 as a denominator straight across from your other fraction. And ask yourself, let's start with this 4. What time, how did that 4 get to 40? Well, it multiplied by 10. So whatever the bottom multiplied by, multiply the top. So 3 times 10 is 30. How did this 5 get to 40? It multiplied by 8. Whatever I do to the bottom, do the top. 2 times 8 is 16. How did that 8 get to 40? It multiplied by 5. Do the same to the top. 5 times 5 is 25. 2 got to 40 by multiplying by 20. Do the same thing with this one. 1 times 20, of course, is 20. Now, this is where pay attention to your instructions. Our instructions are going from least to greatest. So out of all these numerators, we have a 30, 16, 25, and a 20. The smallest number, or the least, is going to be the 16. After that, we have a 20. And then we have a 25 as a numerator, so that came in third place. And then we have a 30, which is the largest number, and it's going to come in 
last place. So if I were to order these fractions, these original fractions over here, from least to greatest, I would put the 2 over 5, and then I would put the 1 half, and then the 5 over 8, and then the 3 over 4. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'll do some more examples. Um, this ladder method is is really um, uh, really catching my attention. I like it. The only problem that you'll run into is that if you find that you have the same number on this bottom line, and you don't want that unless it's a one. Um, but if if two, uh, if there would have had to be two twos then I would just divide that by two and get those down to ones. Um, hopefully I'll post up another video and find an example of that. But the neatest thing is that if I wanted to find the greatest common factor um, between that, between two numbers, um, this will provide the greatest common factor to find the least common multiple. And if you're dealing with two numbers, it'll give you the um, simplest form of that fraction. So, pretty neat. So, anyway, if um, you have any questions, get a hold of me, and I hope this helps.